All right, guys, welcome back to another Ray Shadow Legends video. This is Ali Plays, and today we're going to be doing the Spider Stand 20 Auto Guide. So, this is the Nuke Strat. So, there's going to be two strats I'm going to be going over, uh, but this video will only be about the Nuke strategy. So, this guy assumes you have your champions maxed out since this is end game content, and um, this includes artifacts plus 16, masteries uh, completed, and full ascension. So there are multiple ways to complete Spiders 20 on auto, but we will be discussing two ways that I've tested. Two ways, but you know, this video is only going to be one way because the video is going to be too long if, uh, if I discuss both ways. So the first method is the method that I use that works on every stage. So this method will work on every stage, not only Spiders 20 on auto. And the second method that we will do in another video is the affinity tank method. And that, that method that is going to be stage specific due to affinity. So the Spider's 20 on auto mission is the most difficult step in your journey uh, to get Arbiter. So the only way to complete this fight is to cheese your way through it. What can we do though? Because Plarium has not done a really good job of balancing this dungeon. So I'll be going over the champions that I use and replacements if there are any. And then there will be not much room for replacements because this with this strat because it's a new strat. Also, since damage is very important in this fight, I will also be going over how to build your champions. Also, this will be my only guide where having your Great Hall adequately leveled up will be important as it gives more leeway in terms of artifacts. So you can take a look at my Great Hall. Uh, it's kind of all over the place, but I do have my crit damage maxed out. So the 25% crit damage is for my cold hearts. And I try to get some accuracy as well for them. So they can decrease the turn meter and some attack. And I got my uh, accuracy for the force affinity at level two to help out my rosin. So before we get into the fight, we got to understand the Spider Queen's mechanics. So her A1, I'm going to have a uh, picture that I created up that shows all the Spider Queen's mechanics. So you guys can read that if you want to follow along. So her A1, Venom Spray, AOE attack that deals 15% more damage to targets under poison debuffs. And her A2 ability, Enfeeble, has an AOE. It's an AOE attack that has a 70% chance to decrease turn rate by 30%. And she places a sleep debuff on the target that loses... Um, and she places a sleep debuff on the targets that lose all their turn meter. So that can be quite annoying. Her P1 ability, passive one, she spawns six spiralings at the start of each round. She spawns two more after every enemy turn and four after her turn. She can only have a maximum of 10 spiralings on the field and she consumes all remaining spiralings at the start of her turn and she will not consume on consecutive turns. So this is what makes the fight really annoying. The spiralings can overwhelm your team and destroy your hopes of getting Arbiter. So her, she also has another passive ability. She's immune to heal reduction debuffs. So thanks a lot for that, Plarium. <laughs> so yeah, the role that we'll be discussing is the, um, this is like a faster clear time of the nuke strategy and the best method in the game. It requires having specific champions, as I said, to fill in roles. And the pool is very limited. This method is the nuking strat, as I said. You probably have seen it before. So my method is using you three units that can, three units that can attack based on enemy max HP and reduce turn meter as well. So these three units that fill this role are three cold hearts. And the substitute for this role is Royal Guard. Unfortunately, that's the only one. But having three cold hearts is not enough though. You'll need to find uh, someone to fill the role of debuffer. So the debuffs we're looking for are decrease defense and weaken. Uh, this is crucial. This is crucial for this nuke strat. Without these two debuffs, the cold hearts will not do enough damage. And then the last role we have is the buffer that places unkillable or block damage on the whole team. So we're going to be discussing these roles more in depth than showcasing artifacts. So again, as I said, Cold Heart is the DPS role. So it still baffles me that we need resorts to such tactics uh, in order to clear a dungeon. So if I was not fortunate enough to have these three Cold Hearts, I would definitely go with the tank strategy that we'll discuss again in a different video. So you guys stay tuned to that. Uh, since this fight is on auto, Cold Heart will start off with her A2 ability. And when, when the next turn, and when the next turn comes around, uh, that's when she will use her A3 ability, Heart Seeker. So three shots of Heart Seeker should be enough to kill a spider if they crit. The reason I'm going over artifacts for this dungeon is because it will be is crucial for your cold hearts to have 70% crit chance. So not all of my cold hearts do have 70, they don't all have 70% crit chance. So 53% right here. But Heart Seeker provides a 30% increase. So ideally you want to have 70% so you can get that 100% when she uses Heart Seeker. So right now is a 83% chance to crit. Uh, which can actually proc sometimes and it's not 100% win, not 100% win rate. But she actually does a lot of damage. So if you look at her crit damage, she has 333% and as well as 3239 attack. And her accuracy is only 60. So this is my DPS cold heart. 
and the other ones have more accuracy. Both of these cold hearts have over 200 accuracy and they are faster than this cold heart. So the reason that is, is that they go first and they reduce turn meter. She does not need to reduce turn meter. The, the slow one that does a lot of damage, her job is to finish off the fight. So as you can see, I farmed a lot of Fire Knight Castle in order to get these uh, artifacts. The best way to do, obviously you guys saw my Great Hall, it was pretty high. So in terms of uh, crit damage maxed out, the crit damage for the Void Champions. So that really helped. And then I also had this 80% crit damage uh, primary gauntlet. Gauntlet, which really helped. And I went with pure crit damage. So I was farming um, pieces for a while. And then you also want to build your cold heart with attack percentage chest. But I did not have that, but I used this for the 23% crit rate. And even with that, it wasn't even enough. <laughs> and then for the boots, I went with attack percentage to try to get as much damage as I can from this cold heart. Uh, let's go look at the other cold hearts artifacts. So crit damage right here. And then I got accuracy here so because I want these ones to be more of a utility cold heart, the ones that can reduce turn meter. And speed over here so they can be faster. And of course, you want to go crit damage for the necklace and try to get accuracy banners. I don't know if I have three accuracy banners. Let's find out. So I only have two accuracy banners. I think if I got a third one, uh, it would be better, but that's that's not an issue. So it is actually very important to get your artifacts to plus 16, because before I did that, I couldn't I actually couldn't even clear it on auto until I did that. So this is big. This is a big boost once you get a plus 16. Yeah. So basically, try to get everything to plus 16. And let's take a look at masteries. Masteries are very important, and of course, I have all my skills maxed out, as you can see. Masteries are very important as well. So this coal heart is built differently than these two. So which ones are good for her? Obviously you want the crit rate and the crit damage. That really helps and increase damage fleet by 5% attack and 50% HP or less. So she's they're honestly going to use her heart seeker when they have 50% uh, or less HP. So that is good. More damage is better. This right here. So flawless execution, crit damage plus 20%. And also you want to get this increased damage fleet to targets less than 40% HP by 8% as well as bring it down 60%. Increase your damage by 6% when attacking targets with higher max HP. And we went with the accuracy. We don't really need these any of these over here, so we didn't. I didn't do it, I didn't have enough time. And it's, you, you don't need it, it's not mandatory. So let's look at the last cold heart. The slow cold heart, how I built her. What makes her different? So she has Wrath of the Slain, that was what makes her really different is that she increased damage inflict by 5% for each dead ally, so it stacks up to 10%. So the, by, by the time her turn comes around, uh, there are two of her allies that are dead and then she's gonna finish off the fight. She's gonna increase her damage by 10%, which is actually a pretty big boost with all her crit damage and stuff. So that's it for the cold hearts. So our placement for this role is Royal Guard. He also has an ability based on enemy max HP, but his is an AOE, so he's a solid replacement. Armager to a lesser extent can also be used as a placement, but I cannot guarantee victory using three of them since I have not tested it out. So don't go building uh, an arm three armagers for Spiders 20 just yet. And you can also mix and match as well. If you have uh, two cold hearts, one royal guard, you can do that. If you have two royal guards, one cold heart, you can do that. Um, I think some people run four of these champions, but they actually have them enough speed where they can uh, go before um, the spider. So they use Maybe uh, three cold hearts, one royal guard, and Dracomorph for something like that. So I do not actually recommend using Rosin because of the affinity at disadvantage, because he is force affinity. So he has a disadvantage against a spider 20. So unless he is the only option, which was my case, uh, his job is to place weaken and decrease defense. So there's a 35% chance that he will get a weak hit against a spider and not land both debuffs. So the success rate with the him drops. If he misses any of these debuffs or any or only one of them lands on the on the, in the battle, you guys just lost. So you gotta retreat and try again until he lands it. So my Rosin, as you can see, is built for C, uh, CB clan boss. So he has high accuracy. He's got 199 accuracy. So we will take a look at the artifacts uh, and the masteries with him. So before we do that, I upgraded his A2 ability. So I upgraded his sheer all the way. Well, not all the way, almost all the way. So that success rate increases uh, for him to land his decrease defense and weaken but that doesn't have an effect on if it's a weak hit if it's a weak hit you can't land any debuffs so his ai is rather clunky so he does not use his aoe turn meter reduction but that's okay for our strategy his bog down ability does not use that at all in auto so there's nothing special here he's got 
167 speed. He doesn't need to be able to survive. Well, he will survive if you have an unkillable champion so that he can place his unkillable, his decreased defense and weaken. And he has 199 accuracy to land it. So nothing special here. Uh, I have primary uh, defense percentage gloves, accuracy chest, and speed boots. So nothing special there. And my masteries, um, I've, done, I've done a guide on in-depth guide slash review on Rods and Scarhide. So you guys can go check that out. But Giant Slayer uh, really, really helps. So you can whittle down the damage. Let's say if, if this if the spider has a little bit of HP left, if you proc Giant Slayer, you can finish it off. So replacements for Rosin, you can replace him with Spider. So unfortunately, Spider is also a Force Affinity, so he has the same problem as Rosin, except he is easier to get since he's an Epic. Well, arguably Rosin is easy as well because he's a permanent fusion. So Spider is here for his A3 ability. It contains AOE decreased defense and a 15% weaken, which is lower than Rosin's, but it should be okay. Uh, it can also be used as a lead for 25% increase in speed for dungeons. So overall, a good replacement if that is the only option available. Uh, this, another replacement is Dracomorph. So he's the best choice, in my opinion, for this role. I wish I had him uh, <laughs> to massively increase my win rate, but RNG doesn't love me uh, with Legos these days. So his A3 ability will place AOE, weaken, and decrease defense. Uh, his affinity is a plus, and with enough accuracy, he'll always land those two crucial debuffs. Uh, let's talk about Bellinor. He's also a sub. Again, I'm sorry there's another Lego, but what can I do? So he's here for his A2 ability that places decreased defense and weaken. And um, I'm not going to go over any more champions with these debuffs, but you can re refer to the list uh, that I will post on here. So this role is needed to keep the slow and powerful Kohlhaas alive until they can slay the spider. So I'm using Mana Eater for this role. On auto, he places unkillable as a first move. So I will not be able to uh, clear this dungeon without this buff. Manator, just like Rosin, does not use his turn meter reduction, which is his A3 ability. No, his A2 ability, Siphon. He does not use that at all, which is unfortunate. And he starts off the battle with Ancient Blood, as I stated. So, substitutes. So, as of the making of this guide, there are only three total champions with, with these said buffs, unkillable or uh, block damage. And the other two are Roshkar, the tower. So, his ability is better because it blocks damage. And Sir Nicholas, he places unkillable on all allies. So let's take a look at my man eater's stats. So he has 215 speed and a lot of health points, 47,000 HP. So that's all you need basically, just make him survive and be able to use his abilities. And I also have War Master on man eater, which actually helps out a lot when you try to finish off the spider. Sometimes Cold Heart does a little bit of damage and then there's a little bit of sliver of HP left. I've actually lost a match because he didn't proc his War Master before. And uh, yeah, that really helps out in the long run. So again, apologies that, well, it's not my fault, but apologies that there are not any, not any, not too many options for the nuking strategy, but we got to cheese our way through it because the way the player did it. So right off the bat, we got to land decrease defense and weaken. If we not do that, if we don't do that, we got to retreat. So he's going to use ancient blood. He's going to use sheer. Let's see if we land both. Okay, we landed both. We're good. So they're going to use their A2 ability first. The thing is, it's hard to make your Kolhars fast, as well as deal a lot of damage. And th one of the issues is one of my Kolhars does not have 70% crit rate, so that can actually uh, mess me up. See, I would have lost without Unkillable. Okay, time for the Heart Seekers. So 1.684. Okay, we pro proc'd a War Master there. Another Heart Seeker coming. 1.5 mil. We proc Giant Slayer twice, that's good. And then the last one was gonna be a lot of damage. These two are gonna die. Oh, didn't didn't crit. So we gotta back out. <laughs> yeah, so as you can see, he's not a hundred percent win rate, but I did complete the challenge mission with it. So yeah, there's a 35% chance that he does not land. He gets a weak hit. There's a weak hit right there. So we gotta back out. Bruh. Okay, do it, get it, get it. Okay, we got both decreased defense and weaken. <laughs> so fingers crossed, uh, this time they can do it. Honestly, I always have bad RNG when I record. <laughs> I think I did like ten in a row where I would, where I did not fail, and then RNG just hits me when I record all the time. It's okay if Rosin's asleep; it doesn't matter. Uh, it's time for Heart Seekers. So one point six mil. One point seven mil. 
And I think the third one, if these cold hearts are dead, yeah, there's one. I need them to die. Okay, there's 10% more damage on this cold heart. And then now she's going to do around 2.7 mil, hopefully. Everybody's dead. And now she's got to clear this. No, she didn't clear it. Yeah, I think this is gonna be the this is gonna be the one that you win, one we win in. So, anyways, the tank affinity strategy I'm gonna do in my next video is gonna be um, it's gonna be have a higher win percentage, but it's gonna be slower. Oh, she didn't crit. Another one. Another one. Another one. Another one. <laughs> so 53 seconds so that was my best time but as you can see it's not 100% win rate unless you get the you get crazy good artifacts of these cold hearts where you can get the perfect stats in, uh, in terms of speed as well as uh, crit rate and crit damage so yeah it is very hard even if you have the three cold hearts and the required champions so for those of you that have these champions as options which are no are not too many because those champions are hard to guess. Cold Hearts, um, my brother still doesn't have Cold Heart in his account. And I know she's a rare Void Champion. Uh, Man Eater as well as a Void Champion. Uh, Rosin is doable, I guess. Royal Guard, you know there's a lot of champions that are hard to get. Especially the Unkillable and the Block Damage Champions. So I hope this guide helps you guys in clearing Spiders 20 on auto if you have these champions. So I don't want to make the video too long, so we will discuss and showcase Affinity Tank Strat in another video. Uh, which takes longer to complete to clear the clear time is longer uh, but it is more doable in terms of availability of champs required so if you guys found this video helpful or entertaining in any way make sure you guys drop a like and uh, share with your clan if they have if they have these champions um, help them clear it hopefully and if you guys are new to the channel you like to see and consider subscribing i make racial legends content and dragon champions content almost every single day and while you're at it, you can enable notifications to let YouTube know you want to see up to date on all my latest content. As always, I want to thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video.